The role of Cambridge's Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology Department, CB uh, as we call it, is to undertake the very highest international levels of research, also to undertake internationally leading education at both the undergraduate and postgraduate level. And the third strand of it is really that we want to have a beneficial effect uh, on society. Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology is a quite unique department. It has a diversity in its skill set, so we follow things from the molecule right through to a whole process, as the name suggests. Doing excellent science is not negotiable. We also have that entrepreneurial spirit which makes us want to apply our science and see how it can be of advantage to society. The department has quite a unique course which is called the Masters in Bioscience Enterprise. It's a postgraduate course and it focuses on the skills for a pharmaceutical or a bioscience enterprise. The students from this course are, are very highly sought. Many of them spin off their own companies. Well, this is a great new building. It's the first time that the whole department has been located on one site, and it's been designed specifically for interaction and collaboration. The research laboratories have been completed to a, to a high level of specification, but more importantly, they're also arranged that it's very easy for researchers to break out. That provides a really nice environment. We have over 140 collaborations with industry. They vary from supporting major research projects to being a small, friendly, brainstorming interactions. And we have a, a general open door policy to encourage industry to come and talk to us and bring us their challenges because we want to be challenged. We're developing a polymeric aortic heart valve and the motivation behind it is because existing prostheses that are implanted, they suffer from having the need for anticoagulation medication and that is associated with complications of risk of bleeding. And so the advantage of a polymeric is that we would not need to take that medication. So how we test the valve is we use, firstly, we do hydrodynamic testing in a pulse duplicator and then we can see how it performs in terms of how much it opens and how well it closes. Once we know that we're happy with the hydrodynamic performance in the parameters, we need to see how long the valve actually lasts. And then we do that in an accelerated test and called a fatigue tester, where we rapidly open and close at a high frequency the valve and measure the performance and count the number of cycles that it has performed. So we're trying to use synthetic biology and develop a technology that would allow for the production of the expensive portion of the test, the biosensor, in country. So the first step is where we design a specific DNA that has our functional protein and a special tag for the adherence to silica. We take this DNA and we uh, transform it into E. coli. Once the culture has turned pink, we break open the cells and take in the lysate. Then we take that lysate and we mix it with some silica and at the end we have now a clear solution with pink silica at the bottom. And to be able Once we have the pink silica, we can take that and use it directly in an assay format to detect things like malaria for our collaborations that we're working with in Africa and for leptospirosis, which is an infectious disease prevalent in Malaysia. One technology that we're working on is called chemical looping combustion and this enables carbon dioxide emissions to be captured more efficiently than with current technologies. The reactor technology that's essential for chemical looping combustion are known as fluidized beds and the group has done a lot of work to understand how these reactors behave and also what parameters govern their performance. Our group has a long association with the study of fluidized beds. Fluidization is the phenomenon where a fluid is passed through a bed of granules and once the air reaches a, a critical velocity, the sand granules start to become suspended in the air and the whole behaves as a liquid. A fluidized bed provides a good environment for uh, combusting uh, fuels such as biomass uh, due to these good mixing characteristics. In conclusion, the group works on a, a range of really important topics, ranging from carbon capture and storage right through to the selective oxidation uh, of organic chemicals. 
This is the Magnetic Resonance Imaging Lab, and here the group focuses on fundamental research in chemical engineering, reaction engineering, pharmaceutical sciences, oil recovery, and the food industry. So the aim of my research is to develop high spatial resolution magnetic resonance imaging methods to better understand fluid flow and uh, transport in rocks and also to study all displacement processes. And the idea here is to use the high resolution pore space images and flow fields to generate numerical predictive tools so that they can have a more efficient recovery of oil, which of course is a depleting resource. What we can also do with the high resolution MRI data, we can co-register with the high resolution micro CT data. And these types of data sets can be very useful to study and better understand fluid flow through rocks. I look at the interaction between gas and liquid flow inside packed bed reactors. In order to do that, I make use of sulfur hexafluoride gas, which is sensitive to the NMR signal. And I also then look at uh, liquid water, and then we flow them through the experimental system at the same time. Um, and the distinction between the fluorine and the hydrogen allows me to then separately look at the velocity fields of the gas and the liquid. And then that gives a, a better picture of what the physics are already doing inside the reaction vessel, which would then obviously help the performance of industrial units. So magnetic resonance imaging is not just a clinical diagnostic tool. It can also be used to understand fundamental systems uh, applied to various industries as we've seen. Uh, in the hydrocarbon recovery, the synthetic fuels, and also fundamentals of heat and mass transfer. So the Molecular Neuroscience Group and the Laser Analytics Group work closely together and we study neurodegeneration using optical techniques. We've developed a fluorescent screening platform and this uses the model organism C. elegans. When we overexpress this amyloid beta protein, which is involved in Alzheimer's disease in the muscle of the C. elegans, this prevents them from wiggling as much. So we want to use our platform to correlate the wiggle with how much protein is present and the aggregation. We're really hoping with this screening platform that we can find potential therapeutic targets. Maybe one of our compounds will one day prevent Alzheimer's disease. This department is really great because it's so diverse. Our group has collaborations within the department which wouldn't have happened if there wasn't the diversity here. There's a great collaborative nature here. There's a lot of different research going on and there's a lot of overlapping projects that combination of people that are at the best in their fields in the world is pretty incredible. It's very interesting to talk to other researchers, try to develop new collaborations and being in the center of cutting edge technology. In just eight months, we've seen an enormous difference in our capabilities just by having people in this one building. The vision that we have going forward is that we're going to be top of the league and it seems that we have all of the resources and all of the people that should allow that to happen.